Hello, I'm Jean Tung, one of the pediatric gastroenterologists here at the Mayo Clinic. Today I would like to talk about vaccines. Why is this so important? First, because many patients are immunosuppressed due to their IBD medications. They may be more susceptible to infections that could be prevented by these vaccines. Second, once immunosuppression is started, current guidelines tell us to avoid live vaccines. This includes patients that are taking high doses of prednisone, azathioprine or 6 mercaptopurine, methotrexate, anti-TNF agents such as Remicade, Humira, Simzio, or Golimumab, and the newer nanolizumab or vetalizumab. In the April online issue of the Journal of Crohn's and Colitis, Dr. Wynn and his colleagues at the University of Toronto in Canada surveyed their adult patients in their IBD clinic. Overall, only 45% of their patients had completed their immunizations. While the percentage of people who had received the influenza vaccine and hepatitis vaccines was rather low at 61%, the rate for meningococcal vaccines was only 21%, and the rates for the hepatitis B and HPV vaccines were really low at around 10%. The low rates of immunizations reported in the study are unfortunately not too surprising. Dr. Rassan at Boston Medical Center surveyed patients from the CCFA website and found immunization rates were only slightly better, 83% for the influenza vaccine, 43% for the pneumococcal vaccine, and 50% among women for the HPV vaccine. When he surveyed adult GI physicians in the U.S., only 52% routinely checked immunization records. My colleagues Dr. Lester, Lou, and I surveyed pediatric GI physicians at IPD centers in the U.S. last year. While I'm happy to report that 93% of PHGI physicians checked vaccine records, this was not at every visit, nor did we evaluate every vaccine that children could get. For example, while we were good about checking influenza, hepatitis B, and varicella vaccines, varicella is a chickenpox vaccine, most of the time, we weren't as good about checking other vaccines that our teenagers needed, such as the meningococcal vaccines or HPV vaccine. Why has this been such a challenging issue? Well, first, understanding safety. Some vaccines, specifically live vaccines, should not be given if you are on immunosuppression. Some patients, but even doctors, don't fully appreciate this. Second, knowing what vaccines are needed by age. Primary care physicians are generally more knowledgeable about the latest vaccine schedule. Third, care coordination. GI offices don't always have access to the patient's vaccine records and may not even be able to give you the vaccine in their offices. If a vaccine is given at the GI office, then the primary care office needs to know this to update their records and know what subsequent doses may or may not be needed. So let's try to address this. Number one, which immunizations are safe? Vaccines that are called inactivated are safe. This includes your annual influenza shot, meningococcal vaccine, tetanus, pneumococcal, and the HPV vaccine. However, if you have been on prednisone for a while, you should discuss with your GI doctor how long to wait to get the most benefit from your vaccines. If you are currently taking prednisone or on an immunosuppressant, you need to avoid live vaccines. This includes the varicella, otherwise known as chickenpox, the nasal influenza vaccine, and yellow fever vaccines. For children, this also includes MMR, which is the measles, mumps, and rubella, and rotavirus. For adults, this may include the zoster vaccine. If you are not taking an immunosuppressant, then there are no vaccine restrictions. Second, how do you know what vaccines are due? Communication is key here. As a patient, try to bring a copy of your immunization records or access it online when you have your IBD visits. As a gastroenterologist, reminder systems can be very helpful in discussing this with our patients at routine visits, but optimal other times to discuss this are at diagnosis or prior to making a medication change. In our pediatric GI survey, another common time was just prior to transferring to an adult GI physician. We all share a responsibility in keeping our IBD patients as up-to-date on vaccines as possible. I hope this was helpful for you today.